M.G. Leonard on writing. This episode, Ideas. Where do the good ideas come from? Some artists or musicians seem to spew ideas ceaselessly, casting them about like semi-precious stones. Others produce one giant ostrich egg of an idea that defines their entire lives. I had always wanted to write a book, but try as I did, I couldn't decide what it should be about, or who would be in it, or why on earth I was writing it, and who in hell's name would want to read it anyway. These insecurities would make me stop, and I reread my words later, cringe, and tell myself for the hundredth time that I was a rubbish writer. All my favourite books have, at their core, well-observed humanity, and a brilliant idea that, when you read the story, feels like it always existed, just had to exist, and was merely waiting to be discovered, pointed out by the divine muse. So, why was this divine musy person never pointing out any inevitable genius truths to me? What was wrong with me? In my mind's eye, I was an unworthy, snivelling pleb at the foot of a mountain, topped by a poet revelling in the romantic notion that talent is a gift and you either have it by the wheelbarrow load or you barely have a thimbleful. Well, my friend, if there's one thing I am now certain of, that romantic notion is bullshit. Talent is another word for hard work. And once you know that, you can put your ego aside and get on with the job. I'm pretty sure ideas come in different ways for different folk, and some people have got amazing techniques for stimulating an idea. But for me, I've learned that my ideas for stories come when I'm writing something else. I was writing something cliched and derivative when I had the idea to write about Beatles. People say you should write about what you know, but that doesn't work for me. I don't want to write a book about myself. And if we only wrote about what we knew, well, then there would be no Lord of the Rings or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I say you should write about something you care about, get excited about, are passionately interested in, or that you want to learn about. And that is what happened to me with the Beatles. I was writing a different story in which I needed to create a villainous living environment. And I thought, yes, I will fill it with creepy crawlies because... I have been scared of creepy crawlies all my life and found insects to be terrifying, dirty, alien creatures. But to describe something really well, you have to know a lot about it. To be able to conjure an image in a reader's imagination, you have to be able to describe it in a few brushstrokes, but in a way that evokes its absolute existence. And it was when I tried to describe the creepy crawlies that I realised I didn't really know anything about creepy crawlies at all. I didn't even know what one was. At first I thought it was an insect, and then I realised that it's the arachnids that frighten me the most, and they're not insects. And then I found myself wondering what a woodlouse was, because it has twelve legs and is neither an insect nor an arachnid. And I couldn't write until I had answers to my questions. So I began to research, and that dropped me down a rabbit hole into a coleopteran wonderland full of wild, crazy and beautiful creatures. And that was where I found my inspiration for Beetle Boy, Beetle Queen and the Battle of the Beetles. But here is the other thing about ideas. One idea is rarely enough for a book. A book about cool invertebrates would probably not have got me a publishing deal. A good book will have a central idea, but then there will be a number of other ideas that express themselves through characters and subplots. If you have a number of strong ideas and can weave them together into a story, then you have the makings of a book. Once I had gathered all my ideas and started writing Beetle Boy, 
oh, the ideas for other stories filled my head, like tantalising distractions luring me away from the work that had to be done. And that is how I think I probably will have ideas forever. For as long as I am writing something that must be delivered by a deadline, I'll always have a new idea that I will want to write much more. You have been listening to M.G. Leonard, author of Beetle Boy. The wonderful music was by Sam Sparling. Thank you for listening and keep writing. <laughs>